I need to do a video diary. It's uh, July 16th, um, 2015. I'm in, I'm at the fairgrounds in Wise County, Virginia. We've done several successful deliveries as trials and it's just been kind of an incredible few days getting ready for the first FAA approved drone delivery on US soil. All systems are go, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Remember in the early days of the company, I brought everyone together and I said, my vision is to conduct the first drone delivery approved by the Federal Aviation Administration in American history. People thought we were crazy because not only did we need to build the technology from the ground up, but the FAA had never given regulatory approval for drone delivery before. And we're up against the technology Goliaths of our time who had their own drone delivery programs in the works. If we could pull this off, it would set the precedent for the emergence of the drone delivery industry and pioneer the future of aviation. Because if drones can deliver packages, then it's only a matter of time until drones are delivering people. Our first challenge was to bring together people who shared our vision. I've always been looking for companies and people who are changing the world. And I came upon a small article somewhere about this little known company called Flirty. I reached out, I contacted Matt, uh, who was the CEO and founder of the company. We had a fantastic conversation and we got together with a single-minded purpose of saying we have to prove that this new technology is going to change the future. Our next challenge was to find the right location, and that's how I met Jack Kennedy. There were uh, many roadblocks on the way to July 17, 2015 with the first FAA-approved uh, cargo flight. Among them, why Wise, a far-fetched little community in Western Virginia in the rural mountains not known for its research universities or its capability and in innovation. It's important for every small community throughout rural America to realize that it is not to be overwhelmed by urban centers of uh, innovation, that they too, with a little risk taking, a little entrepreneurial effort, can be a dynamic agent of change. Virginia wanted to be uh, a leader in unmanned aircraft systems. We set up a series of events, beginning with an event here at Lonesome Pine Airport called Aerospace Days. It was a real jamboree of aerospace to ignite the community in, with enthusiasm for unmanned aircraft and what we can do in the aerospace sector, which involved uh, NASA develop high-powered model rockets. We had uh, every major university that was involved in unmanned aircraft systems represented here flying. And that's how we connected with a young man by the name of Matthew Sweeney at Flirty Inc. Well, I first heard about the project through my former boss, Jack Kennedy. Uh, he brought me upstairs and said, hey, check out this company called Flirty. And I thought that that was a dating app. Um, when I first heard of it. He looked at me and said, you're gonna put that communications degree to use and be the UAS coordinator for this project. This project was a good fit for Wise County because each year we've hosted Remote Area Medical, which is providing free healthcare and clinics to folks that might not be able to have access to healthcare. Stan Brock, who was the founder of Remote Area Medical and has since passed, he actually called me on the phone and he said, hey, he said, there's this group that uh, has a drone and he said, you know, uh, do you have any idea, anything that we could, you know, work with them or collaborate with them on our project? I have your project. I said, it would be the delivery of medications. I said, that would be such a need. There is such utility in it. I mean, life-saving utility. Bringing the drone delivery into the healthcare system would be phenomenal. Oh, this is Andy, by the way. Hey. She's helping organize everything. Oh, yeah. I've, got, I've had a video diary going oh, awesome. since like the beginning of Flirty, so <laughs> you're going to make it into the final yeah. cut. <laughs> Put Andy in there. <laughs> Our plan was to use drones to deliver time-sensitive medicine to doctors. A fixed-wing aircraft 
would fly in the medicine from a rural pharmacy to Lonesome Pine Airport. Then our drones would carry the medicine from the airport to doctors at the healthcare clinic. This was a much more efficient route than the winding rural roads that a traditional delivery vehicle would have to take. We had the perfect opportunity, but we needed a fixed wing aircraft to fly the first leg. So we reached out to NASA. So the reason we were sort of valuable to this partnership is because NASA created a capability a few years earlier. We looked at what it would take to turn one of our general aviation aircraft into a drone. And part of the reason to do that is we could put a safety pilot on board the aircraft. We knew people were gonna need to test technologies. This was an opportunity to collect that kind of data. The general aviation four passenger SR-22 was there to do the long haul. We remotely controlled that vehicle and it actually gave us an opportunity to show that off to all of the local folks who came to see the demonstration. So we had NASA and all of the parties together ready to conduct the first FAA approved drone delivery in history. But we had a problem. We did not have FAA approval to do drone delivery. And if we didn't get this approval, it probably meant the end of the company. If this event would have went badly, and by badly I mean uh, the drone striking an aircraft, an aircraft having to take evasive maneuvers because of this, it would have meant my job. Whew, here we go. It's either gonna be awesome or it's not. <laughs> While we were waiting to hear back from the FAA, we started talking to journalists about our plans, and one of the journalists ran with it and published the story before we had approval. The journalist said it's, it happened today which would be a disaster. It would pull the rug out from all of our plans. The partners would be like, what the f uh, The press release uh, that went out uh, announcing the event uh, did cause some stir uh, within the Federal Aviation Administration and at uh, NASA Langley. Yeah, it pissed off NASA because you didn't get permission beforehand. It, it, it pissed off the... Um Really, everybody. The technology Goliaths wanted the first drone delivery for themselves, and they put a lot of pressure on the FAA to stop us from flying. Uh, prior to the event, there were apparently uh, a lot of calls and emails coming from Seattle uh, to the Federal Aviation Administration, encouraged them not to issue the permit for this event. A small article in a small blog post in the other corner of the world created a furor in Washington DC and the FAA and in two tech giants on the US West Coast. One of them uh, is a jack of all trades and a master of none. They do everything from shooting rockets to shooting movies. And the other one which is constantly searching for a second trick in its advertising pony. And these two companies put a lot of pressure on the FAA to stop this fledgling company from flying. We had to battle night and day to get the approval that we needed so that we could actually fly the first drone delivery legally. My recollection is that uh, Governor Terry McAuliffe was invited to participate. The governor was going to come to this event and inaugurate it and there was a whole truckload of press people coming. So we had the governor's office call the FAA and said, the press is gonna be here, what are we gonna tell them if you don't give the approval? It was uh, a stressful few days as we stayed in waiting and awaiting the FAA to make a final decision. Because here we are the day before the event, nothing is in hand, and it was sort of this just tense, you could feel the, 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 the tension, you could feel it. So we told the FAA, oh by the way, the governor of Virginia is scheduled to come out to personally receive the package. That could have been the final straw that broke the camel's back at the FAA to issue the license or permit authority to go forward. The fact that you guys had put so much effort and time into it and kept hounding and hounding and hounding, the, the persistence was incredible. I was shocked. I honestly did not think you were going to get in. <laughs> we managed to levy enough political might that the FAA gave us the approval. 
the day before the event. We did the first drone delivery in the United States. It's a moment in history. Kitty Hawk is what we called it. This is the first in the nation. This is like a Kitty Hawk moment for us. Uh, it'll be on the national news tonight. The drone delivery business had what some are calling its Kitty Hawk moment in reference to the town made famous by the Wright brothers. This event was historic because it was the first time the FAA ever officially allowed a drone to deliver a package and that has huge implications for the economic deployment of this form of aviation. Calling the Wise County event a Kitty Hawk moment is entirely appropriate because the Wright brothers ushered in an entire new era of aviation that nobody could expect where it would lead. And the drone technologies that made Wise County possible are going to revolutionize aviation all over again. I think that it changed uh, the perception of drones, number one, because you actually made a delivery with a drone. Because this has been talked about a lot, and people actually got to, to see this take place. We were all devoted to the objective, and that was to demonstrate how UASs could benefit the everyday person who needed medical care. Drones have paved the way for urban air mobility. The technologies are being developed, integrated, and we're collecting the data to make it reliable, trustable today. If I can deliver uh, medical supplies from point A to point B in a regular operation, I'm developing reliable capabilities that can only be scaled up to carry larger and larger packages to the point that we have collected enough data, we trust the system well enough to deliver the family of four from point A to point B. We took a leap of faith that um, what we were saying we could do, we would do. And with sheer willpower uh, and a little nudge from uh, elected officials, uh, and the, uh, frankly, the leap of faith at the FAA at that point in time that uh, with NASA's participation, it could be done and done well. And it was. This was a historical moment in and of itself. But it was bigger than us, because not only did it establish the life-saving benefits of this technology, it also set the precedent that would enable the emergence of the entire drone delivery industry. We thought the battle was won, but then the technology Goliaths decided that if they couldn't make history, they'd try to rewrite history. When I Google who did the first drone delivery, something interesting pops up. It says it's, it was Google. It was facilitated by Google. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> no, not quite. They didn't do it. <laughs> they didn't do it. We did it. What? That's fake news. The real data will tell you that Flirty was first to market with the historic drone delivery that was approved by the FAA. Case closed. We kept pushing forward and pioneering the industry. We did the first ship to shore drone delivery, the first suburban drone delivery, the first commercial drone delivery to a home, we launched the first regular commercial drone delivery service. We launched the first pizza drone delivery service. And we pioneered the delivery of defibrillators by drone. And then the Smithsonian memorialized our place in history by accepting our delivery drone to go on display alongside the Wright Brothers Wright Flyer. 
the first plane to fly a person next to the first drone to deliver a package. The fact that this drone uh, was the first ever delivery of cargo supplies and it's going to be sitting next to the right flyer, that's an amazing thing. I remember at the end of the day, everybody was packing up the, the drones and the equipment. I looked at the guys and I said, look, this is a historic aircraft. Don't touch it. Don't clean it up. Don't try to do anything to it. Keep it exactly like it is because this has the potential of becoming a member of the Smithsonian's Air and Space Collection. And that's a big deal. You know, technology is one of these very interesting sort of endeavors where size is almost a disadvantage. Large technology companies do not have the trust of people anymore. More and more, they're like big brother. So I think there is a significant movement of siding with new companies, innovative companies, which are built on a different model and different standards of privacy and different standards of safety with the consumer in mind who are going to win the day. We beat all the odds and achieved our vision of completing the first drone delivery. We set the precedent for the emergence of the drone delivery industry and then we took everything we learned and we set out to build our autonomous last mile drone delivery system. Skydrop.